What's going on, you crazy kids? This is Joey from Universal CPA Review. A lot of people have been coming to us completely freaking out about the audit exam updates in July. This video is meant to give you an idea of what's going to be covered for audit data analytics. As always, please like, comment, and share our video if you're into that sort of thing. And more importantly, if you're a visual learner, Universal CPA Review might be for you. Plus, don't forget, every single one of our multiple choice questions and task-based sims have video explanations, which we think is kind of cool, and you might too. If you want to try us out first, Universal CPA Review is currently offering a free 14-day trial. And if you want to join our team in a more permanent way, we are currently offering a 25% discount if you use discount code UNIVERSAL2021. All right, and that is something that you would apply at the checkout. Okay, so enough of that. Let's dig into it. All right, booyah, what we've all been waiting for, audit data analytics, which is extremely important in today's day and age, and specifically in real world audit engagements. And the reason there is because it's the 21st century and we're not auditing in 1985 anymore. And the reality is that data analytics is an extremely pervasive component of business processes and is often used as a tool when management is preparing and presenting their alleged properly stated financial statements. So on the audit side of this, we're asking ourselves, how does this come into play? How do we consider all of this data analytics stuff when we do our jobs? At the end of the day, we are performing risk assessment procedures to understand where the client is susceptible to more risk. How does data analytics come into play when we are observing and testing management system of internal controls? How about when we go ahead and do our jobs and actually perform substantive testing? Okay, so we want to know how should data analytics be considered when we ultimately conclude our opinion and put together that final work product, the audit report. So those are the questions that we need to be asking ourselves as auditors and ultimately on the CPA exam. Okay, so you got to know that audit data analytics will be applied to four areas in the audit engagement itself. It'll be applied, like we said, in the risk assessment phase, when testing internal controls, when performing substantive tests, and when putting together an audit opinion. Okay, so I'm not saying that this is a list that you necessarily need to be pulling your hair out and memorizing, right? Because trying to memorize your way through the audit exam is a one-way ticket to a 71%. Boo! Okay, so this list that we just mentioned is not rocket science. So taking a step back and just thinking about the major components of an audit engagement, these four items, by definition, are the audit engagement and what it really is. Okay, so after you unpack all the nitty gritty, at the end of the day, risk assessment, testing internal controls, performing substantive tests, and opining on the financial statements is all an audit really is. So point being, don't get spooked by this list. Remember, when performing the audit, we need to do all four of these. Okay, so ultimately, this is a high level overview of what data analytics is and how it is going to be applied to the audit engagement. So what we really need to know in terms of the details of audit data analytics will consist of this five-step approach. So we're going to go through all five of these steps and thoroughly try to understand what it is that they're trying to get us to process and ultimately absorb. Okay, we're going to go through how we are going to plan the audit data analytics. We're going to talk about access and preparing the data for purposes of the audit data analytics. We're going to talk about the auditor considering only relevant and reliable data that is used. Right? If they're throwing in a bunch of numbers that aren't necessarily relevant or reliable, why would we consider the audit data analytics? Okay, so we're going to perform audit data analytics. That's going to be step four. And finally, we're going to evaluate the results and conclude on whether the purpose and specific objectives of performing the ADA have been achieved. So let's unpack all of these. Okay, so when we break out the five steps of audit data analytics, we're not going to refer to this as ADA, and not because that's not what it stands for, but because every time you say audit data analytics, we want you to remember that this is the auditor performing procedures when using applicable data analytics provided by the client. Okay, so we're going to call this what it is. We're going to call it audit data analytics. We can't just memorize acronyms and just convince ourselves that we know this stuff. We need to really understand the intuition behind these concepts. Right? Who's doing what? Let's simplify this. Let's make this even more simple by comparing the five steps within audit data analytics as baking a cake. Okay, so starting with step one, we're going to be planning the audit data analytics, and we're going to be asking ourselves, where are we going to apply audit data analytics during the audit? Right, this is our brainstorming powwow, if you will. Okay, so in the process of making a cake, this would be step one, where we're going to plan what kind of cake do we want to make? Right, we're sitting there, we're asking ourselves, do we want to make a chocolate cake? Do we want to make a vanilla cake? Maybe even go over to Whole Foods and make ourselves some organic mango tart cake, whatever your kids are into these days, right? 
During this phase, we got to ask ourselves, what kind of ingredients do we need to buy in order to effectively bake ourselves this amazing cake? Okay, so let's take a step back, and now let's compare this to the planning phase of the audit engagement. This is where within the audit data analytics, we're going to determine what procedures are we going to perform? Right? How are we going to make this audit data analytics as highly effective as possible? Okay, so when you're sitting at the Prometric Center, you're trying to remember all this stuff, you got to remember the buzzwords. Okay, so certain words that you're going to see in a question that you got to just tie back to the planning phase of the engagement. They're not going to be like, hey, this is the buying ingredients of your cake phase of the engagement. Right? They're going to be very specific with their terminology. So there is an element of this that requires a little bit of memorization. I hate using that word memorize, but little buzzwords can be the difference. Alrighty, so let's go through it. Okay, so instead of determining what ingredients are we going to need to bake this cake, we're going to be determining the nature, extent, and timing of the audit data analytics. We're going to be determining what financial statements are we going to pull our data from. Okay, so specifically, we're going to determine what related assertions made by management have been made. Okay, what accounts presented and disclosures made by management will be relevant here. Okay, and those procedures being within the risk assessment, testing internal controls, and substantive testing phase of the engagement. Right, what techniques are we going to use? Specific tools, graphics, tables that are going to be used. What are we going to be using when pulling relevant data to come to a relevant conclusion? All right, and finally, we got to ask ourselves, what data is needed and how available is it to us? Maybe we need an analysis of sales transactions or expenditures, right? What softwares did management use? How intuitive is it for us to understand? But at the end of the day, we want to pull this accurate information. Okay, so this all falls within the planning phase of the audit data analytics. Okay, so step one is done. We know what ingredients we want to use in baking our cake. Okay, so now we're going to go over to the grocery store and we're going to buy some food. Okay, we're going to buy all the ingredients that we need to bake our cake. But we also don't have a recipe. So we're going to need to get a little bit creative. All we know is that grandma used to make our favorite cake a certain way. Okay, but we just have a general idea of what ingredients need to be used, right? Maybe it's some flour, some eggs, some buttermilk, a little bit of cream butter. And because my favorite cake is vanilla, we need some vanilla. Okay, the reality is I know nothing about baking a cake. So I don't know if I need vanilla, vanilla extract, what's even the difference? Okay, so just to be safe, I'm going to get a bunch of stuff. How does this relate to step two in performing audit data analytics? Well, this is the phase where we access and prepare the data for purposes of the audit data analytics. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means that we're going to now be identifying data and understanding where it came from, right? What is its source? And we ultimately need to verify that we can even use this data in the same way that when we get home, we need to verify whether we needed vanilla or vanilla extract. Maybe we find out we wanted egg whites, not eggs. Okay, so this is where we're going to be preparing the data for the analytic tool that we're going to use. And so what we're going to tell you next is something that you need to know. This is a process known as data transformation. Okay, so let's think about that for a second before we pull all our hair out and start memorizing big freaky words. Data transformation is transforming data, literally, as the word suggests. So here we're not only going to have our access to our ingredients for the audit data analytics, we're going to also be preparing it for its use. Okay, so the four steps in data transformation require that we're going to extract, transform, load, and protect. Okay, so let's think about that for a second. We're going to be extracting data from whatever software or source that it comes from in the same way that we're going to be pulling ingredients off the shelves at the grocery store. Okay, and then when we get home, we're going to then transform these ingredients into our cake. And in the audit process, this data basically will determine what is usable and what is not usable, right? We ultimately need this in a format that makes sense. And then we're going to load the data so that we have something that is usable, not just a bunch of numbers. And then finally, we're going to protect this data. Okay, so got to remember our buzzwords for each step in audit data analytics, right? One of the big ones is certainly the four steps within data transformation. So once again, got to know ETLP, extract, transform, load, and protect. Two additional terms that we need to know within step two, accessing and preparing the data for purposes of the audit data analytics. And these might feel a little bit intuitive as well. The two terms are going to be referred to as cleansed and normalized data. Well, if we're cleaning the data, right, cleansing the data, then we're going to do this to improve the overall quality of the information, right? In the same way that taking a shower improves our overall hygiene, which makes us higher quality people, 
we're going to clean the data to ensure that it's of higher quality. Okay, so an example of this could be altering the date format to be more usable, right? Isn't it annoying when sometimes the month comes before the day in the date format? Maybe we need all of our data to be saved as the day before the month. Okay, so maybe we got to just go back and clean that up and make it a little bit more consistent all around. Okay, so that's cleaning the data. What about normalizing the data? Normalizing the data is very simply eliminating duplicate data, right? When baking our cake, maybe we determine that the vanilla and vanilla extract are the same thing. So we can get rid of one. Maybe we determine that we don't need all of these eggs in this carton. We only need two of them. So no need for all of this duplicate data. So we're going to toss some out. So if we take a look at our spreadsheet, we might be able to remove duplicates very easily. God bless the power of Excel. Okay, but for your exams purposes, this is what we need to remember when it comes to cleansing and normalized data. Okay, so thinking about step three, we've now accessed all of the ingredients that we need to bake our cake. We brought it home, now we're in the lab, and we're going to bake it, right? But before we do that, we want to determine that the ingredients that we purchased are of high quality. So now that we understand all the data that we have, before we just start baking that cake, let's make sure that we're not going to get sick from what we make. Okay, so let's determine what ingredients and what data is considered reliable. Also, what is relevant? Okay, so when it comes to the audit engagement, this is where we're going to consider the relevance and reliability of the data that we obtained. Can we rely on this data that we have compiled from our client? Right? Can we rely on this creamed butter that we purchased? Did it go bad? And is it even relevant and within our recipe of baking our cake? Okay, so for the audit engagement, we're going to be looking at characteristics that make good data, right? We want to understand the data a little bit better. We want to understand the source of where it came from. So within our buzzwords, we want to understand whether or not the information is going to be considered data that is both relevant and reliable. So starting off with understanding whether or not where the data came from, right? Was the data auto generated from a system or maybe it was manually entered? Right. Did Clark in the bookkeeping department type all this stuff out into an Excel? If he did, does that increase the risk that the data is less reliable? Maybe he entered a six instead of a three. Okay, so was this a system program or was it of manual entry? We also want to determine where the data came from, right? Where was it sourced from? Was it sourced internally or externally, right? Did the client create the data in house or did they outsource it from ADP to create the payroll records? Okay. So we want to determine if the data is its original data. Or has it been manipulated prior to the audit team receiving it? All right, so maybe the accounting department got a hold of it before we took a look and tried to clean it up. Maybe they tried to make it more intuitive for our review. That's the stuff that we want to know. It might make an impact on the overall nature, extent, and timing of the performance of these audit data analytic procedures that we're about to do in step four. Okay, so we want to know what makes good data here, right? We're going to determine if the data contains high quality characteristics. And again, got to know it to know what makes high quality data. And there are four things that you generally need to know. You're going to want to know if the data is accurate and complete data, right? Obviously, accurate data is better than inaccurate data. Complete data is better than incomplete data, right? No rocket science here. We also want to make sure that if the data is encrypted, that it is in fact complete and accurate. And we also want to make sure that the data is timely. Okay, so we want to understand if the data is being created in a timely manner and that it is consistent, right? We don't want to have any crazy outliers here. Okay, so if we tie this back to the process of making our cake, we're essentially determining whether or not at this point we have high quality eggs, high quality creamed butter. All right, so before we give ourselves a stomach ache, this is the type of stuff we want to double check. Okay, so we're making sure that our data is of high quality. Okay, the time has come. We're now ready to bake our cake the same way that we're now ready to actually perform the audit data analytics. So what does that mean? Well, we're now going to determine if the initial results of the audit data analytics need to be revised, right? We've now taken a look at all the data and we've determined what is relevant and what is not relevant. We determined how reliable this is. So now we need to go back and assess the results and make sure that they are applicable. Okay, so the buzzwords here that you need to remember for this is going to be initial results, right? We want to determine based on the initial results whether or not they need to be revised. And if the revision is necessary, then what are we going to do about it, right? How are we going to make these appropriate revisions and then subsequently do it all over again, right? We're going to re-perform the audit data analytics, okay, if it is necessary.
In the same way that if we determine that we forgot something at the grocery store, right? Maybe we left some milk. Okay, so we totally spaced and forgot our milk. What are we going to do? We got to go back and get it. Okay, we can't just mess up grandma's cake because we forgot some milk. So obviously, we're going to drive back and get it. All right, so now we're going to reperform our audit data analytics. And after we've now determined that we have everything we need to bake our cake because we went back and got that milk, we're going to reperform that audit data analytic and determine how we should plan and perform the additional procedures that we initially didn't consider. Right? How are we going to include this milk into our recipe when we go ahead and dump it into the formula? Okay, I don't know. I got to look it up. So at the end of the day, this is where we're going to be applying all of the techniques and tools in our toolkit to conduct the most efficient and effective audit data analytics. All right, so we got to remember our buzzwords for actually performing the audit data analytics on the exam. Okay, booyah, we made our cake time to eat it. This is the final step in our mental map. We're now going to be reviewing all of our final results. We're going to see if that cake came out the way that grandma used to make it. Okay, so in the audit engagement, this is where we're going to evaluate the results and conclude whether the purpose and specific objectives of performing the audit data analytics have been achieved. Okay, so this process is known as audit by exception, sometimes called ABE. But we don't memorize, we know the intuition. That's how we pass the CPA exam. Okay, so in addition to that, we're going to try to determine whether or not this is as factual of a result as we're going to get. Right, we want to eliminate as much subjectivity as an auditor as we possibly can. Okay, although we're going to use some professional judgment, we don't want to completely use our opinion. All right, but at the same time, auditing is never going to be that black and white. There's always going to be some critical thinking, some professional judgment that is going to be used all day long. Okay, so all you need to do as an auditor when your day comes is take the mindset of any reasonable decision maker, right? In other words, don't think too hard about this. Don't overinterpret or overengineer these results, right? You just got to get back to the basics. And that's the whole mindset that you need to take when it comes to audit data analytics in general. As you can see, none of this is really complete rocket science. It is a bunch of fancy words. And for those of you who've never audited, it's a new language. All right, but it's not a language that you don't already have a fundamental understanding of. Okay, so we got to remember our five steps. We got to remember our buzzwords. We got to go and apply this to the practice questions now. All right, now it's going to be all about application and repetition. So we got to build that mental map in our heads and let's not forget any of this. Okay, sometimes I know that's easier said than done. And I know that this might feel a little bit overwhelming and I know that it might not feel like it. Okay, but let me tell you, I can feel it. We are making some progress, so let's keep rocking and rolling.